I am Quinn Thomas, an associate professor at Virginia Tech, and I'm excited to provide an introduction to the semester long course that I teach in environmental informatics that uses publicly available data sets and modules to teach both data science skills and environmental science concepts. First of all, my course integrates materials from different existing modules, many supported by the National Science Foundation, and uses RStudio as a coding environment. A major thanks to these efforts. To provide context, the course is a junior level class in Virginia Tech's environmental informatics major. It is also part of our general education requirement for advanced quantitative and computational thinking. Its prerequisites aren't specific, but require some prior experience in quantitative and computational thinking. It is a prerequisite for our environmental informatics senior capstone course, but it includes students from multiple majors across campus. The class is designed as two 75 minute periods per week over the 16 week semester and has between 15 to 25 students. I've taught it twice, including the last spring semester they required moving it online halfway through. The 10,000 foot view of the class is as four phases. First, the students get their feet wet with a straightforward but interesting module, followed by multiple weeks of training in data science with ecological applications. Then the students have multiple weeks of practice with real data, different kinds of data sets, and introduction to key new data science concepts that builds on the multi-week training. Finally, the students are given more independence in analyzing a data set where the process of analyzing isn't as laid out in the assignments. The course also teaches fundamental environmental science concepts, allowing it to cover multiple environmental grand challenges. These questions include, how does climate change alter lake temperature? How is global ice cover changing in lakes? Where are rivers in the US exceeding legal nutrient levels? How are global temperatures changing and what is causing it? How much carbon dioxide does a forest remove from the atmosphere? How much carbon is stored in a forest ecosystem? The challenges I had when developing the class were combining environmental learning objectives with the data science skill objectives. To address this challenge, I linked existing standalone environmental data science modules together. These existing modules have been vetted and tested, ensuring quality. But as standalone modules, they do not make a coherent course that builds skills over the semester. Furthermore, the existing resources use a range of data science tools, including Excel, R, and Python. Building coherence in the computational framework and trajectory of skill learning is a unique contribution my course provides to the larger community of educators. The materials are all available on GitHub as different modules. I recommend visiting the page to see them. By hosting them on GitHub, you can see my updates as I edit and improve the course. Each of the modules addresses an environmental question and all but model seven, module seven, are derived from excellent standalone modules. The goal of module one, which is part of the Macro Systems Eddy project, is to get students working with R using a lot of guidance, um, but allows them to quantitatively answer a question early in the class. Module two, which is built off data carpentry, uh, is the core training in R for data science, and it's over a seven class period unit. Modules three through six are uh, the practice modules, and they're from Project Eddy and from uh, the Cubes Hub, uh, Neon Cubes Hub. And module eight is the more independent variable, and that's one that I have developed um, as part of this class. And it directly uses Neon data and was also developed as part of uh, a Cubes um, work group. I'll now go into details of a few of the modules. So module two uses the data carpentry resources, which I point you to here. It's an excellent, excellent resource for uh, teaching the basics of data science in R using an ecological data set. The data science skills that this module helps build up are R basics, data types, comments, execution, importing data, saving modified data, cleaning and filtering data, working with continuous categorical and date time data, mutating data, 
which is calculations based on columns, summarizing data, pivoting data from longer to wider formats, and plotting data. Focusing on modules uh, three uh, through six, the general structure of these is to um, first introduce students to the environmental data science concepts, uh, where I largely have just modified the instructor uh, lesson PowerPoints from Pro Project Eddy or from the uh, Neon Cubes. Second, I introduce data science concepts using live coding of the new functions and approach they'll need to apply. These all build on the data carpentry uh, module two. Finally, I introduce students to the assignment by walking them through the assignment and the expectations. After all the, all the introductions, the student work, work for one to two more class periods on the assignments and I apply, apply help, uh, provide help as needed. And the students are allowed to work together on these modules. As an example, we're gonna look at module three that focuses on lake ice phenology from Project Eddy Resources. And it's, uh, here's where it is located on the course GitHub. A description of the module can be found in the readme file that is in each module. The assignment can be found in the assignment directory, the presentation and code to teach new data science skills in the data science skills directory, and the presentation for introducing the science concepts is in the science introduction directory. As I mentioned, the module is built off the Project Eddy module of the same name. If you're interested in incorporating similar science concepts, but want to use Excel in your class, I recommend directly using the module on the Project Eddy website. The module is mostly focused on practicing the skills developed in the Data Carpentry Model 2, but adds skills in linear regression and in our markdown generation. So here's an example of the assignment. The assignments are structured as R markdown documents that students work through, and they generate a final HTML file that is shown here on the right that includes text, code, results, and figures. I highly recommend R markdown, which is what is shown on the left, because the assignments include easy to read text and clear parts called chunks where students write code. You can see that's where it says insert code. When the students generate the final HTML, a process called knitting, it reruns all their code. This forces the students to generate reproducible assignments and creates an easy to read document for grading. R Markdown are similar documents that mix text describing the analysis and the analysis code are increasingly used in the data science community. Visualizations of the data and analyses are a key focus of the class and I grade each figure they produce using a rubric. This is an example of a figure that plots the day of year that ice is no longer covering a lake over time for six different lakes. Students learn that a seemingly complex figure is easy to produce in R once you learn the key functions. The next module uses water quality data from the USGS to examine whether measurements of nitrate in different rivers across the US exceed the EPA limit. Again, this is based on a Project Eddy module that I converted into R to, uh, and emphasize the environmental science questions that also build new data science skills on top of what was learned in the previous modules. In particular, students learn uh, how to import data sets that don't have a standard header format, use if statements in code, apply loops to scale up analyses, paste strings and numbers together, and communicate with an API. Here's an example of the data they have to read into R. I stress in the class that they cannot just open a file in Excel and delete the lines that aren't data because that does not scale well. Scale well. They always have to work from the raw data, even if it looks ugly and hard to work with initially. Finally, the course includes two exams. The exams use a real data set that the students have not seen and requires them to complete a simple analysis within the 75 minute class time period. The analysis is relatively easy, but requires baseline practice to finish in the time and simulates a live coding job interview. The easy but timed exam complements the harder but multi-week modules. I'll wrap up with some lessons learned. First, for reasons I previously mentioned, I recommend using R Markdown for assignments. 
Second, I found RStudio Cloud to be a powerful tool. RStudio Cloud is an online version of RStudio hosted by the RStudio project. It allows me to create a common workspace for all students. And since it is hosted on RStudio servers, all students have the same computational environment. This overcomes the issue, which is all too common, of at least one student not being able to install or run R on their computer. It also allows me to log in and see a student's code so that I can provide feedback. RStudio Cloud is gonna start charging for use in larger classes, so the cost may have to be included in a course budget. Finally, my take home messages are, one, using real, i.e. not pre-processed data, is an opportunity to teach students data science skills to get the data in an analysis ready form that allows them to address an environmental science question. And two, there are a lot of excellent and some less excellent modules for you to use in a class that teaches both environmental and data sciences. However, the challenge is integrating them into your class without them seeming disjunct. I recommend focusing on efforts to modify existing modules first to build coherence around your learning objectives, then work on building your own modules and give that back to the community. Thank you for listening to my talk and my contact information is below if you have questions. Again, the materials for my class are on the GitHub link on the slide and there's a 45 minute seminar describing the class in more detail that's also available and I've provided a link to the slide. And again, many thanks to the educational community that's provided such great resources that allow us to bring to them together to build coherence uh, and opportunities for our students to learn both data science and environmental science simultaneously.